Well, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, to talk about how to provide feedback on Dr. Cog's 2050 small area forecast. Uh, next slide, please. I'm Andy Taylor with Dr. Cog. Um, I've got a few things to share before I hand it off to uh, Jeffrey Chiapella. Uh, to give you a demo of the web map that you can use uh, to review and provide comments on this forecast. Uh, we've got a few other folks from Dr. Cog on the line today to help you answer your questions about this work and if you've got any questions about how it relates to other planning work at Dr. Cog. I know we've also invited some other guests uh, to tune in, uh, so if you've got questions uh, that might apply to RTD or to the State Demography Office, we've got a couple folks um, who at least can listen to your question and maybe get back to you later. But if you have questions about how any of these folks, especially RTD plans to use this forecast as well, um, they are on the line and listening um, and we can unmute them to help answer those questions. Uh, so we've got a, a few things to cover today, but we wanna provide lots of chances to ask questions. Uh, next slide. Uh, there are two ways um, that we would love to hear from you during this time that we've got today. Um, we've got time at the end of our session to focus on questions, but we've built in some, some spots to pause and deal with questions as we go. Um, I've got some colleagues on the line who will be helping monitor for questions, or if you want to raise your hand uh, and uh, eventually be unmuted, um, we're happy to take questions throughout the session. Uh, next slide. Uh, so uh, what's the purpose of this? I think it's helpful for backing up and providing a little context of why we do this work. Uh, next slide. Um, I'll, I'll be clicking through this or I'll be having my colleague click through this uh, a couple times uh, as we go, but um, this is a helpful metaphor um, for us as we think about this work and where our work doing the small area forecast fits into uh, the larger forecasting and planning processes uh, here at Dr. Cog and elsewhere. Uh, we start with the statewide forecast. Uh, this is the work from the State Demography Office. They're really working at the state and county or regional levels of forecasts for households, populations, and jobs. Uh, much of their work uh, goes out to uh, the year 2050 right now. Um, can you click again? Yep. And so this is really uh, wh why we like this metaphor uh, of a relay race, because we are, while we are working with them on that handoff and uh, working to coordinate with them, our work largely um, takes place at this next step here, where we are trying to forecast the distribution of households and jobs um, out to 2050. And so we're taking uh, those, those uh, forecasts from the state demography office at the regional or county level. And we're trying to figure out how those are distributed out to our more than 2,800 uh, small areas or traffic analysis zones. And that work feeds directly into the travel modeling work that happens here at Dr. Cog and elsewhere through other studies. It really is to help forecast the travel patterns uh, the what is the anticipated traffic needs between different zones and how that gets assigned down to a transportation network. And so I'm going to hand it off here to my colleague Joffrey, who's going to uh, walk you through the type of feedback that we're looking for and also provide a demo of our uh, comment map. Great, thank you very much, Andy. This is Joffrey Kiapella. There are a couple of ways that Dr. Cobb staff can attempt to integrate your feedback in this modeling process. One is to change the capacity. So each traffic analysis zone or TAS has a limited capacity for households and employment based on the size of the TAS, whether or not there are natural constraints or regulatory constraints. And we can adjust the capacity on the household side or employment side based on this input. The other way is through scheduled development. These are development projects that are under construction, approved, or otherwise known in your community. So we'll be asking you to please provide information on these projects where you believe we may have missed it uh, so our team can improve the results of the predictive model. Additional questions and answers can be found in the frequently asked question, which I'll uh, point you to in 
in the demo, in the uh, web, inter web map interface. I uh, wanted to check in to see if there are any questions so far. And, and seeing none, we'll move on to the uh, the demonstration, the live demo, and as a way to um, go through how to provide input. Um, thank you for the going with the live demo. Always presents. Um, some possibilities for, for fun. So when you click on the small area forecast comment map web link, it will take just a, just a moment to load the content, but you'll have this welcome splash screen. In this splash screen, you can see there is a link here to the frequently asked questions where you can uh, check in there or link to that for a more detailed um, read through the FAQs. Also on this flash screen, several bullet points to cover directions on how to interact with the map interface, and we'll cover that right now. As a note, if you would like to return to that welcome splash screen, uh, navigate to the top right corner, the question mark, and that welcome screen, welcome splash screen will reappear, for instance, if you want to dive into the FAQ. Again, there are two uh, forecasts or two map interfaces um, on this comment map. There's a household forecast 2050 and employment forecast 2050. It will default when you link to the link to this, it will default to the household forecast at a regional extent. And the layer that we're looking at is the traffic analysis zone layer or TAS is 2800 plus zones. In order to get to a point where we can submit a comment, we'll first have to click on the on that uh, household forecast comment. I'm going to cover the left side here. It's very commonly used zoom in, zoom out, uh, web map interfaces. But two buttons here, the legend. Uh, we see a, a, about a dozen or more comments have already been submitted. Thank you very much. There are uh, green arrows up or down to indicate an expectation of less or more household growth. And then the symbology used um, indicates that the TASs are uh, on a blue color scheme of zero to um, greater than 3,500 household units. If we zoom in further, it's also the legend. Uh, as we zoom in, in further, we'll uh, of course get more detail as well as labels. Um, labeling. So the three labels that we have uh, for each zone are the TAS ID, the traffic analysis zone ID, the four-digit code, as well as a 2020 household figure and a 2050 household figure or estimate. Also on the left-hand side, the base map gallery, I find the helpful one is the aerial photography, the Denver Regional Aerial Photography Program Draft 2016 Vintage. Um, which is helpful to uh, gain greater context and what you're looking at. So we'll go through a, a, a quick demonstration of, of submitting a comment. So at the near the top right, submit a comment. Um, we're close in on the, the Denver central area. And City, County of Denver. And what I'm going to be focusing on is a development that is known, that is under construction in this TAS 1348. What is my expectation? Perhaps more household growth. And this is perhaps hypothetically um, as the 2050 household count may already account for this development, specific development project. What's the basis for your expectation? We're going to go ahead and, and click other on here as it is a project that's under construction. Go ahead and populate that with detailed information, uh, ideally including project status, 
And if the construction dates are known, start and end dates or years are, are very welcome and appreciated. And then any information or helpful details about the project would be, would be appreciated here. Uh, I believe this is the name of the project at the Rhino Development Project 246 Apartments uh, with a limited amount of, of retail. If it is helpful, if you do believe it is helpful, please go ahead and add an attachment. This may be a site development plan, um, a final development plan, or an overall development uh, plan, as, as you believe it is necessary, and if that if that documentation is available. And then finally, on the, under location, we will click on the map to draw the location. And in many cases, it is click, simply clicking to add a point, as the uh, cursor is indicating here. This project is this one full city block. And then you can, you can also enter an address to search. Uh, but in this case, it is a, a, a well-known um, location. And then we will click report it. Um, in this case, I, we can cancel out or leave it as it is and return to the, to the PowerPoint presentation, but it is as simple as that. And we, we very much welcome um, any constructive feedback and um, any specific project information that you think we may have missed. Okay, and Andy, I'm going to hand it back to you. Are there any, uh, although stop here to see if there are any questions so far. All right, so we have um, a couple questions here um, uh, from uh, Paul DeRocher. Um, he wants to know uh, if we can provide some examples of where um, some uh, zone constraints could be or could be or would be amended. Um, so I'll, I'll go ahead and answer examples of that um, to hopefully make this more concrete. Um, let's say we have um, um, better information about zoning than I think we used to um, in, our, uh, in our process, but there's some cases where um, we just might uh, get things wrong or there's been a recent change. So let's say uh, there was a major rezoning in an area back in January. That may be really helpful information for us to try and make sure that we're allowing the right capacity for, for house, new households or jobs uh, in that area. So it could be a change. It could be that, um, that we, we maybe uh, have a capacity that uh, a community may consider too low. Um, and so that's where um, information would help us at least go check that capacity and see if um, that's what's limiting growth uh, in that area under our current models. Uh, another question that we've got so far, uh, what is the process for qualifying comments and additions? Um, we didn't want to make it too prescriptive to say you have to provide us X, Y, Z. And we really are want to take in uh, any information, but the st information that's most helpful for us figuring out um, if we've got something accounted for, and if we need to do anything else to um, provide um, additional capacity or put something in a scheduled development, it's really helpful for us to have some specific information, especially when it's in uh, a known project to have start and end years, number of units. Names are really helpful for projects because we may have already accounted for it, but we may have it uh, in, in the wrong spot. And so, um, the more information that can help us uh, land a project or, or uh, tweak our information, um, the, the more helpful it'll be. So it's, we don't want to make it too onerous, especially if a community has a lot of comments to provide, that they have to provide a bunch of pieces of information for every comment. And we will follow up if we have additional uh, questions that, that um, we can't quite uh, figure out uh, exactly what change we may need to make, uh, we can uh, attempt to follow up as well. So this isn't a, a one chance to get a change made. Um, we have another question here from Aaron Fosdick. Uh, is there any ability to add our own layers as we review for reference? 
uh, Aaron, I can send uh, to you uh, and uh, anyone else that may be interested. Uh, my email will be at the end of this slideshow. Um, I have some ways that folks can add uh, our feature layer, our feature service um, that serves this web map uh, to your own uh, geographic information system. So you can, using ArcGIS Online where um, this uh, layer is hosted, you can add this back into uh, your own GIS and look at it with any types of uh, local layers you may have that may help facilitate your review. All that we would ask is that you would still try and get the comments uh, to us through this uh, through this interface. Um, so we understand that it is helpful to see uh, the the uh, some of this data in reference to some of uh, data that you may have locally. Those are the questions I've got so far. Can you go to the next slide, Joffrey? Um, I think just trying to figure out where to start and where to, we wanted to compile some, um, some of this information in one spot uh, for reference. Um, I think one of the best ways to get started with this is just to, to uh, dive into the map and start looking uh, at different areas, uh, start uh, looking at the results, zooming in and out, looking at your community. Um, we will also be posting a recording of this webinar. So if you feel the need to share this with other folks who may have some valuable information, um, this recording will be available. All the other material, whether it's these slides or uh, the, the, the FAQ that we've referenced, all of that will be available. Um, there's some additional information uh, in that FAQ about uh, different questions that we've been asked over time uh, that we've tried to anticipate as well. Uh, so hopefully that can help uh, provide some additional context uh, if you have uh, questions uh, that, that you don't get a chance to ask here. Um, there may be some very specific questions that don't can't get addressed in a, a, a FAQ document. Uh, we have some uh, virtual blocks, virtual office hours blocked out um, where you can um, just uh, reserve a spot, reserve a half hour, reserve an hour, just sign up to um, maybe ask us uh, some questions uh, in, about a specific set of things or share some concerns. Um, we are ready to listen. Um, I've also included some contact information in case you want to reach out directly to me um, or Brad Calvert, our uh, division director, um, between now uh, and when we'd like to see comments by uh, May 29th. So um, this is really the last piece of information that we've got to share out to you. Um, we would love to hear any feedback and would uh, open the floor for any comments if you want to raise your hand or type into uh, the, the chat box as well. We'll give it a few minutes here to see if uh, there are any questions coming in. I do not see any hands raised. Again, we'd really like to hear from you. I'm not seeing anything coming in, so I, I really uh, respect and value your time. Um, so I won't drag this on too much longer. Um, there will be a recording of this available if you want to uh, share with anyone, uh, like I said. And uh, please feel free to reach out directly if you've got any questions that come up uh, after uh, after you've had some time to uh, re start reviewing and looking at this material. But I really appreciate your time. 
uh, and attention on this and really value your feedback and the types of local information uh, that we really can only get by um, engaging uh, uh, you all more directly. Uh, so I really appreciate your time. Um, and this is a really important information as part of the regional transportation planning process uh, and as part of other planning processes going forward. So uh, we just want to make sure that, that uh, you have a chance to uh, provide some feedback and provide some better information where we may be missing um, uh, some key local information. So um, with that, I'm not seeing any hands raised or any additional questions coming in. Um, my contact information is here, um, so please feel free to reach out. But with that, um, I think I will uh, call this webinar complete. So thank you very much. Thank you very much.